with all due honor and praise to the Most High, I worship Thee through the divine image of my wives. Amen. Welcome to the Horseman Law Podcast. Horseman Law Sundays, man. This is this is going to be a special one. Y'all gonna have to forgive my voice though. Uh, allergies out here been killing me, but we're gonna keep it pushing. This is our special Rolling Loud edition of uh, Horseman Law Podcast, and we're going to get it in. We're going to talk about everything behind the scenes, everything that went on. Um, Killer Jake on call. Uh, we were together this week, this past weekend. And, um, yeah, man, you know, it was a beautiful weekend. I mean, what we did this weekend uh, is amazing. We'll get into details about everything that went on. Um, I want to start with something that I just, a story that I just got wind to. And um, I just want to speak on it a little bit because nobody is. Um, there's a woman by the name of Denise Smith from Tacoma, Washington, a security guard. You know, this is, this is, um, this is a sister in our profession, you know, what we do. Uh, I know we speak about the brotherhood a lot, but there's a lot of women who work in protection. And I want to just give a rest in peace to the sister because she was brutally murdered by a army ranger by the name of Patrick Byrne. Um, a coward, no doubt. So, um, you know, rest in peace to her and her family. Condolences. Um, you know, it's a terrible thing, but hey, we've been saying it on this show for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's not going to get better. You know what I'm saying? It's only going to get worse, and they're looking for soft targets. Now, those of you who don't know what a soft target is, a soft target is just, you know, children, women, um, zones and areas where they know there aren't any firearms, um, people who are vulnerable. Those are soft targets, our elderly. So we got to protect each other, man. We got to protect our women. We got to protect our children. And not just the ones that are related to you. Uh, we're going to have to protect our brothers and our sisters' children, our neighbors' um, women and children, too, because, yeah, um, this is clear, clear and cut, you know. Um he attacked a black woman and brutally murdered her on tape, you know, on video. And um, the craziest thing about it is the man got bail. How is that possible? And I'm being, you know, I'm being sarcastic. We know how that's possible. But this man got a bail, two million. You do the math, 10% of two million. And he gets out. So, got that out the way. Um, let's uh, let's chop it up, man. Let's chop it up. And first, and um, I want to dispel something that I heard too. You know, all those who were at who were at the Rolling Loud show, who have seen it since, saw that the the baby performed after um, Meg Thee Stallion. Now, there's some. There's some people trying to go out. I don't know if it's that Meg Thee Stallion's people. I don't know who it is who are trying to say that maybe Tory violated some type of um, protection order. That's false. Meg left the stadium. She left the property as soon as she finished performing. By the time Tory even came on stage, she was already gone. So that's false. That's complete propaganda. And I'm not leaning. I'm, no, I'm on nobody's side. I wasn't there, so I don't know what happened. But that right there is a is a false narrative, and we want to dispel that. Uh, other than that, congratulations to Roland Loud and everybody involved. No shootings, no riots, no fights backstage, no stabbings. I mean, for those who believe that we can't put on a hip hop event and secure it and protect it without there being any kind of mass casualties. This was a win for us. So 
pat yourselves on the back, those of you that worked. Pat myself on the back, uh, Killer J. I mean, it just goes to show you, we can put on events and not have to worry about uh, whether or not somebody's going to get hurt, somebody's going to get killed. We did a major event, massive stage, main stage, secured, no issues, no problems, three-day event. Uh, that's a blessing. So without further ado, let's get Killer J on the horn and let's chop it up. Yeah, boy. It's crazy. I mean, those of you that worked there, if you worked at the event, we had over maybe 30, 40 different security companies. So shout out to all those companies that worked. JR, Rat Pack, and others, Anton, Guardian. Hello? Killer J. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up, bro, man? Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you, brother. I mean, uh, an event like no other pulled it off. <laughs> Three days, no shootings, no killings. Nope. It was amazing. Hell yeah. So how you hey, feeling? Bro. Huh? How you feeling? I'm good, man. Just some spice and this fucking um, spice and kale, celery sprouts, some fucking rice. Same bullshit. Oh, you got the good shit. Yeah. The good shit. So I was just telling the people, man, trying to shout out. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with all the companies yeah. that worked that Rolling Loud, but I know a few of your people and people you've known. So if you want to shout them out, man, just go ahead and give them some love. Yeah, I, I, you know, just give, give, give Anton a shout out. You know, a couple of Ushers were real down people. They, they held it down. For real, for real, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Those type of situations right there can be so chaotic because you have at least 27 different groups of bodyguards. Like people, like a lot of people don't know these guys, you know? It's a fact. You had a guy, it was, it was kind of like the neighborhood. You had every South Florida put on a black security. I asked one guy security. Man, I'm a groundskeeper. I just got the job for the weekend. <laughs> I said, you're a groundskeeper? What the fuck are you doing out here? He said, man, there was, a, uh, there was an ad on Craig or some bullshit, some security group called Rat Pack hired me. I'm like, what? Bro, man, I want everybody to get their fucking money. But you know how dangerous this is? You work in a job where don't nobody fucking know you. You don't even hire me. You know, then you had the bodyguards eating fried chicken on duty. Like I say, it was a few solid people there. I can honestly say that. But it was such a, it's a clown fest, man. Ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, you got to remember, you got to remember that, you know, everybody needed a job. Everybody wanted a job. In a situation like this, everybody got one. I mean that's just that's just how you that's just how you gotta look at it, man. Everybody who called themselves somebody in the security industry got some work that week. Yeah. It was an easy check, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like I tell everybody, a lot of times these companies it's like the company oh, I can't think Victor works for this company, right? Yeah. And they had citizens out there. I watched. You was with me. Mm -hmm. We watched the white guy on the back gate for thirty seconds. He was strong. When a when a black guy said, "Man, fuck you," and threw him into the fence, he crumbled. Like, why would you put a man that works as a dental tech in a black T-shirt to confront people on an exit or entrance that's never had confrontation or how to talk to somebody before? That's the trouble with all the security. Man, they be hiring these guys. This is what happens whenever a big event comes into town. Everybody paycheck. They don't think about, sometimes you got to be man to go, bro, thank you, but no thank you. I, I don't have 40 guys. I don't have 50 guys. I don't have 70 guys. I have two guys in no security. Facts. Keep it real. No, but they don't. That's like, 
You're not going to see an anorexic uh, stripper at Booby Trap or King of Diamonds. It's just not going to happen. No. No. But they was out there. Yeah. If you don't got the qualification, why are you doing a job? Facts. I mean, one of the one of the biggest issues I think we ran into too is is the telling. Who who are you telling yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. Who are you gonna tell on? See, let me make let me make this clear to everybody. There's nobody you can tell on us. There's nobody you to run to. There's no one. There's no one for you to run to that's gonna give you a reprieve or help you. You try, you try to tell on us to a cop, that cop right there, we probably worked with that cop for 10 years. Exactly. We probably put that cop in a show. We probably done sent this kid somewhere. We done did all kind of things. So you think you got relationships with people just because you we black and they got a badge, you can tell that on us to them. Yep. It ain't going to work. Or you got to remember, remember the, um, the security company... They were supposed like everybody was ex Delta Force and Rangers talking about they was in Fallujah. Cool. This is Fort Lauderdale. You can't even control the crowd here. What the fuck did you do in Fallujah? <laughs> everybody can tell a story till it gets time to do the work. Yep. Everybody got a story to tell. Everybody been somewhere then did something, then had something, said something. Until right. it's time to put in work. I don't think I don't think people see the the, the listen. There was a hundred thousand people there. It was what five or six stages. You and me and Charles off every inch of that whole entire whole entire uh, property with no credentials, no security shirt, just a black t shirt and a body armor that God gave us. And we and everybody knew the fuck were. Absolutely. Absolutely. We we'll do every and checkpoint. And if, dealt and if with you Miami Garden every time every every law enforcement agency was there, we dealt with them. Yep. You get you get one shot. See, the first time is ignorance. You got you get one time to stop us. First time is ignorance. The second time is pride. After right. that, after that is the Thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leave. Yep. They asked me to escort the, the mayor to the VIP. Lo and behold, Jose Casinco's son thought he was tough. <laughs> I said, man, I'm just bringing the mayor to. The mayor's police escort was the size of a toddler. He, so he couldn't even see him. I turned to say to the mayor, the security guy grabbed my shirt. The guy on the steps said, my man, I told you he was good. I said, look, man, we're good. I'm not going to say it again. I took the mayor, well, I disciplined that guy, took the mayor upstairs, came back downstairs. The guy was still on the ground. When he got up, up running, I ran to his superior. And, and his superior, I tell him, this guy can do whatever he want to do. Facts. So after he wiped the blood off his nose and mouth, I shook his hand, said, Some oh man, you gotta know when something's good and not good. Facts. Facts. See, understand something, man. We see everything, right? If if we see that you've already seen us walk through, come through, and then when we come back, you you try to stop us. That's a sign of disrespect. Yeah. You already know what we're here to do. You already know who we with. You already know what's happening. Let it happen. I mean, you prime example, right? Everybody in the world into a beach. America, a Central America, wherever. Every continent. If the lifeguard sells fish shark in the water, you've never seen a person say, excuse me, sir, is that a lemon shark, an angel shark, <laughs> tiger shark, bull, maple shark? A great white shark, salmon shark. No, motherfucker, it's a shark. Get out the water. It's just that simple. Why well, I got to explain to you what type of shark I am, nigga? I'm a shark. I eat. Period. Period. I mean, still the funniest story. The funniest story is homeboy that followed you back. Oh, yeah. He worked with this group called uh, COS. He said, my man, you don't have a, you don't have, um, a credential. I said, I work for the owner. He doesn't have a credential. Therefore, I don't need one. I said, how old are you, my man? He said, I'm 48. I said, so you're 48 years old. Are you a father? He said, I'm a father and a grandfather. 
I said, so you know the difference between good and bad, right and wrong, what's real and what's fake. So you can look at me and tell this is what I do. So look, I'm just going to say this to you. You can stop it at anybody who I am. Or you can come to the compound. <laughs> oh, I'm going to come to your compound. I'm going to talk to the owner. I need to see who you are. I said, look, all I'm going to ask you is this. It's a compound. Just apologize. You were there. Take what happened when you got to the compound. Now you can't leave. Now you can't. That now, man was so humble. Now you can't leave. You didn't came all the way to the compound thinking you was going to tell. I'm going to tell. These Negroes yep. have no business being here. Yep. I'm going to tell. Ross. And I told him, I said, Ross, years ago, I'd have gave you a pair of pink panties and some lipstick and put you on the block for me because you are all the poor I need for this night. <laughs> that man begged and humbled and cried. Said, Sir, I apologize. The first thing I told him, I said, Ross, listen to me. You don't understand the narrative. The narrative is a grown man, a grown black man in 2021 is telling you he works for the man that's paying everybody here. That wasn't good enough for you. You want to see papers like I'm a runaway slave. Mm. <laughs> we got to the gate where the compound is. I asked the guard, who am I? He said, you're Jason. You, you're the head of security for all the world now. You work for the owner. That wasn't good enough. But when he got behind that gate and saw y'all sitting down, I shut the door behind him. The Maryland, the Maryland Road, he was no longer Ross. He was Rachel. He was Rachel. <laughs> Urban, please. All the blood left his face. Yeah. All the blood that's left his see, face. That's, that's when we need a camera crew. We make, these, we make the body snatchers come out. Facts. 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 I mean, the audacity, the audacity that this dude followed. See, no, yeah. number one, number one, the, the same dude tried to stop me. Not 30 minutes before you. That's the funny part. You know what it is. You know what we doing. It's just that same. And, and, and I remember the movie. I remember Malcolm X. I remember the Spike Lee movie. Yeah. Them niggas should never have that much power. Yep. And that's what it was. That's you all it that? is. That's all it is. The idea of black men walking the earth knowing Nothing can stop them is the scariest thing to these motherfuckers ever. Hey, you gotta remember this, right? If there was over a thousand people there, therefore you know it's over four hundred security working there. Out of four hundred security every day from the moment we touched that ground, you and me and Charles went to every entrance, every VIP, every checkpoint, introduce ourselves. Yep. That was Friday. That was Friday. Yeah, from Friday to fucking Sunday. That's Friday, yeah. And That's still Friday. we did fuckery. I had to tell this one guy, man, You Matt sent me down there to get the passes. You yelling at this grown-ass man like he's a child behind some passes, and I told you I was coming. I said, look, look at the narrative. He's on one side of the gate, you're on the other side. You yelling at him like he's an overseer, and he didn't make the quota of picking your cotton today. Mm. Everybody, everybody that's in here... Is either an artist or a manager of an artist. If you just slow down and talk, it's 2021. If men can't talk to men, and you're being belligerent, you're 63 years old, this man's probably 23, and he's not even yelling at you, but you're disrespecting him. I, I can't have that, not on my watch. I said, just imagine this. Imagine me slap the cowboy shit at you. Then you be the victim. You're just an old man that works trying to work. No, no. You was trying to be the overseer, yelling at this man, but then now you got the bands. And you gave me the bands to give to him. I'm trying to make sure you get home so you can eat your oatmeal and Jared talk. Just relax, father, relax. <laughs> then the real thing, this is the funny shit. My boy Charles on his first hand. This lady we knew wanted to come there. Charles told her, I got you. She told Charles, oh, my people got me. Charles said, look. There's no way, in, and she won't even, and they were on stage three. So there's no parking over there. There was no way stage three, so they, they put like the um, rappers at, right. like the, the beat rappers. Right. There was no way that you could go over there and park your car. Your people are lying to you. <laughs> but people come there working, and your cousin or your brother that we friends with ask, look out for you. We're going to do it on our time, not your time. Mm. 
You can't show up at these shows and say, how you doing? I'm Black Sally or, or Brown Mike and think somebody's going to do something for you. You're not paying nobody. Mm. That part. That part. Like, what you just said, what you just said right there is the realest shit ever. You're doing it on your time. Yeah. Now, this is on our time. Yeah. If you get the privilege, if you get the privilege to be invited to something we're running, you're on <laughs> our time. This is the funniest shit, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. What's the rapper's name? Kodak Black. He was wild now backstage. I said, my man, let me ask you a question. Why are you trying to be extremely belligerent and aggressive verbally at Rolling Loud, but when you was in a B.O.B. and they were wearing a dress, you was the most quiet motherfucker there, Bill? I said, Bill, why don't you calm down? Because we both know when you was at that USP, they had you on chill mode. You Facts. weren't making no noise. Facts. I said, don't come on the street and blow up. But when you was on, when you was on, when you was in population at the USP, United States Penitentiary, you was quiet. You were peeing on yourself. They had you wearing a dress. So come on, bro. That man shut the fuck up and left. You can fool everybody else. I know what happened when you was over there. They didn't call you no Kodak. They didn't call you no Kodak Black. They called you Little Billy, and you acknowledged that name. But that's what they do, you know? That's what I always say, Tank. This world we live in right now is the most... This is like, remember you was in eighth grade show and tell? That's what it is. Every time we go to these events, it's show and tell. If you put on a black t-shirt, you can have security. security. You know? It just, it, just, it just blows my mind on the floor. And he needs to say something. If you served in Fallujah, I respect you. But don't come working with us if you ain't never did that, and I can, I can stop trying to be the backdoor coon. If you didn't mm. get hired to work for the owner, you're just a subcontractor. You're not doing bodyguard work. Facts. All Facts. these dudes, you know, you know what it was. It was like back if you watched the movie Breaking or Beach Street. Every security person there had on a sweatsuit, a track suit. His logo is this. I, I, I said, what is the battle with the t-shirts? <laughs> Marketing and promotion. Yeah. First of all, it's this me. I tell everybody, right? If you have a product that sells, you can sell it on the street of fucking Norfolk, Virginia. You can sell it in Newark, New Jersey. You can sell it in Wyoming. People are still buy it, no matter what name you put on it. But when you try to overdo it, Blue Magic, Angel of Death, Get High Tonight, people don't want that shit. You're like, what is this? You trying to make something to a commercial product? When you when you pushing gold, this is pure gold we pushing. Horseman is gold. Facts. The man told us, I've had sixteen different security. I had big black guys, I had Spanish guys, I had ex military, I had guys that work with famous people. But this is what I've always wanted in my lifetime. I've never moved like this. Right. Right. And people don't realize <laughs> what we did. We work 19 hours a day. You and me said, you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're going to work 19 hours a day. we only going to eat an apple, a pear, an orange, and a peach, and drink water. And walk 6.5 miles every day in hot-ass, rainy-ass Florida and still go to the gym and do our shit. And that's what the fuck we did. Yeah. Yeah. We worked. I'm, I weigh 268, you weigh 290, Charles was 315. How the fuck medically stand that you had three big men that train hard, work for over 18 hours, walk 6.5 miles every day, and we took in under 500 calories. We probably knocked on 325 worth of calories. Mm. If that. For three days. For three days. No sleep. No sleep. How you get off work at 5 o'clock? We gotta, we gotta be. We gonna be in the gym at nine. You gotta be on. You gotta be on set at twelve. How the fuck you sleeping? Mm. There's not a person in this business that can work and just walk into his room and fucking fall asleep. You're gonna shower. You're gonna put your dirty clothes in your bag. You know what I'm saying? You might give yourself a facial. You're gonna sit in the chair and analyze your day or write in your journal. You're gonna call, or text who you love. Then you're gonna try to fall asleep. Then your kin folks will call you in the morning at six or seven o'clock. Wait, you the fuck up. Yep. Because you still got to manage at home. 
there. You still got to manage what's happening at the house. I told you, there's a white guy. I'm going to find his name. I think his, his website is like plates or some, 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 some shit. And I remember the day he shit on the black dude, Chef Russ. Oh, there's no way this guy can eat that much food and only sleep uh, two hours a night and train like this. Why? Because you can't put. Hmm. And Tank, you know the truth. That's why I purposely, that's why I purposely made sure we did that because of guys like him. Yeah. Oh, you, no, no one can do that and still grow. The more the, more the motherfucker crunch Jim say to us, where are you guys from? I've never seen anybody train like this before. My man, and all we doing is circuit training. I apologize that you've never seen people coming to do 225 for four sets of 25 to get up curls, side laterals, front laterals, uh, shrugs, hammer curls, cable curls, tricep extension, the fly machine, the chest press, lat pull down. That's just one set. Mm. Shut it down. Everything's a super set. No breaks, no talking. Shut it down. That's why I said you can, you can act like you can act like everything we do is just, you know, all smoke. The work we put in is more work and better work than anybody else in the business. I, I'll, yeah. I'll state my life on it. That's what it is. I know that's what it is. That's just what it is. That we not trying to brag. We not trying to. This isn't marketing. We not marketing. This is just real shit. What did man say to us? Do you guys have a business card? You're talking to our business card. Mm -hmm. You want us, you call us. We perform. Nigga, the real life 18. That's all it is. Real life 18. That's what I'm saying. Yep. All the shit you seeing in the movies, we doing. Man, so I've, I've been waiting to talk to you, bro. I've seen this shit about this. This is what blows my mind. I'm going to get off road loud for a second. Sure. I was watching the police officers, you know, and I have, the, you know me, Tank, I have the utmost respect for anybody that put foot to ass, you know what I'm saying, serve and protect, whether it's military, whether it's, you know, local police officers, border patrol, you know, anybody, U.S. Marshals. I respect anybody that put foot to ass for a living because you have to be a special individual. The thing that blows my mind is I'm tired of commentators. You know, I don't like them. How is Tucker Carlson mm. or even Donald Trump talking about these police officers are cowards. Mm. When you have grown men like Skip Bayless, when you have grown men that never participate, participated in a pencil fight, how are you talking about physical violence? Mm. When God made you, he made you as feminine, soft, as warm butter on biscuits. So there's nothing in your body. If you was a dog, they would kill you because you occur. <laughs> but because you get, and this, this would be so crazy about this country. Majority of ex-military people in the United States of America watch Fox News, okay? Everybody that put on a service uniform in the last 33 years know that Donald Rumsfeld started that war in Afghanistan is a fucking lie. There was no weapons of mass destruction. All you, you went to somebody's neighborhood and fought the niggas that lived there, all right? The war is ended now. How are you trying to tell me you came home, this is the most, you have more PTSD than Vietnam War. That's mm -hmm. number one than World War One or Two or the Korean conflict. And you got all these people with these these young these medical issues, more amputees, come home hooked on drugs, homeless, wife and gave everybody in the neighborhood pussy, cheap pregnant. You can't get your VA medicine, can't get your VA loan. And y'all gonna sit here and praise these motherfuckers that they don't even got the same amount of dirt on a boot as you do. Mm. This was the funny thing I saw. I don't know these guys. Uh, Charles knew these guys. I can't stand when these fat black bodyguards think because they working with the open and act like they're doing something. Tactical vests on, face mask, mm. pistol. A well, who are you protecting? Hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on now. What did we say two shows ago? We said all these guys faking this fake law enforcement. Look what happened to y'all. Takashi six nine. Takashi six nine. Uh, 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 what's, the, what's the young boy's name? Polo G. He riding around security. They had flashing lights. He went to jail. How are you in a car for a security guard with flashing lights? And you go to jail. Mm. Look at this. What was the nigga name? Playboy Cartier. Yep. He, his nigga went to 
went to Kmart and got a, a law of security enforcement vest on that didn't even fit over his nipples. Like, I can promise you, the car, the Tijuana cartel is not looking for Playboy Cardi. I promise you that. Now, now the funny thing about it, the funny thing about it is, we said this. We said this. Impersonating an officer. That is a federal crime. We said this. It's only a matter of time for you Negroes wearing the badges, wearing the badges and the body armor and all that shit, for they come get you. This is the funny shit, right? We're going we're gonna to break this down, right? We're going to break this down in net worth, right? I can promise you that Playboy Cardi is not paying his security guard over two fifty a day. I can promise you that. I can mm. promise you that six nine is not paying them guys over four hundred dollars a day. I'm saying four hundred, okay? I can promise you that Polo Polo G is not paying his security guards two hundred dollars a day. So you 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 got this GI Joe starter kit you put on, and you not even getting compensated for what? This is the crazy part. If you so much of a gangster rapper and fuck the police, why you want the niggas to guard you to look like the police? Mm. Jim. Now, now, you, now, now, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We not, okay, listen, we not shitting on y'all out there doing what you got to do to get paid. You, you got to get a check. We not shitting on you. All I'm saying is, all we're saying is, you got to be smarter than the motherfuckers hiring you. Yeah. You got to know work, what it is. If you work at Publix and you bagging groceries and you jacking dicks for a living on the side, I'm not knocking your hustle. Just say what it is. I'm a whore that does brown bags. But don't, but don't be out here on this shit like you doing security work with all these cars and pictures. Nigga, you, you being a police. Facts. Let the, the cops. You supposed to be security. And that's, and that's the bottom line. A cop is a cop. I ain't no motherfucking cop. You're yeah. not finna confuse it, it, a horseman with a cop. We not cops. No. Nah. And, and this is the funny thing too, Tank. This is the thing people forget, right? You just said the key word. If you if I worked for six nine and a guy was taking a picture and trolling him, why are you going after the camera? Hmm. If a grown man in 2021, when everybody's finances still ain't straight, niggas are back behind rent their car note their lights, their gas, their cell phone bill. Why am I worried about this man? He's not a threat. He's a grown man stalking dick. So you supposed to say, man, fuck you, keep going. Why are you even not? Right, right. You got to stop letting the people you work for let you be the fuck. I promise you. When you go to Rackers Island, you're going to have all the confrontation you want. Facts. Waiting on When you got goddamn Latin kings over the, over the phone or the bloods, I take your tennis shoes, you want to have all the confrontation you want, bro. Waiting on you. So don't put yourself in the in, in the buffet if you're not ready to eat mm. or be eating. See, think this is what has to happen. Not just this stupid ass sports entertainment world with these fucking frogs and ass people. Even this, right? And this is when I, I'm 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 gonna tell you how karma is, right? There's a guy named Greg Gutry. He's on here. He has a uh, uh, um, he has a time slot on Fox News, right? He has this big black guy there named uh, Tyrus is his nickname. He was a wrestler. He's been one of Snoop's bodyguards, whatever. He played on a couple of TV shows. He's always talking shit. So one of the co-workers came out there and said he was sexually harassing her, threatening her. Now is that now she didn't sue the company. You did all this boot coon shit for these whiteies, and now these whiteies and you. Now you got a sexual assault. You got threatened if you go a text message. Mm. You can't butter toast on both sides and say you didn't use butter tank. Uh, that's, that's what blows my mind. How is it everybody is talking for us but us? Facts. Facts. Like if you would, it, it, this, this is what I told somebody. If you sit up here and think, if these white people can say January 6th, so they were nice guys, they were patriots, and nothing happened, you trying to tell me right now, every cover up in this world, they don't lie about. Right. If if, if, if Rudy Giuliani is this corrupt now at seventy six, you trying to tell me with all them black drug dealers and a mafia dude from the past, he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't uh, crooked with them? Come on, you trying to tell me he wasn't you getting his envelopes? 
He wasn't getting his envelopes? You try to tell me that the Lucchese family, the Gambino, that Paul Castellano, John Gotti ain't never paid his fucking mutt some money before? Mm. You try to tell me Dick Barnes or Frank Lucas or the preacher man uh, ain't paid his dude some money if he was around then? Like, come on, man. Stop Shit is fucking ridiculous, man. Stop it. Stop it. If you continue to try to look to these people for some type of morality, you a fool. You a fool. And I told you before. It, 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 listen, to me, you and me. There was a black girl in security guard. Um, fuck, was going to rough her up. Listen, miss, I promise you this. Me and my boys, we're not. We don't hold the camera. They please don't stop. We're the guys that gonna make him stop. You ain't never have to worry about any man hurting you while you're around us. Facts. That's why I ain't let him downstairs. Facts. Don't worry about that. They, they are some real men in this world. Trust me. You just have to see three of them right here. We don't do that. I'm not gonna watch no man beat on. No. I'm not gonna watch no man jump and beat down no man. Right. If That's they true. didn't break the law, when I mean the law means the code of ethics, spitting the security guard's face, fuck you, nigga, I got a gun. Then I'm not gonna let you rough them up. No. 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 At some point, at some uh, at some point, that then, has then, to be an example. Then you had Tucker Carlson, and this is not everybody. This is how dumb people are. It was the white lady's name, Marjorie Green, right? Mm-hmm. She's from Rome, Georgia. Rome, Georgia is famous for two things. It was like Foresight, Georgia. It was a sundown town. Number one. Number two. There was a black kid. I can't think of his name. He was he was like the number eight defensive end in the United States of America. He was a high school of America, born to Vanderbilt. He was seventeen. I think the girl was sixteen. They kissed or they touched each other's private parts. They locked this young boy up. In the Jackson State Penitentiary in ten years. That's right. Oprah got that's right. Jail. That was from Georgia, and that's who they and, and that's who and that's who they let this white crazy. You could this is crazy. You guys are barbecuing the baby for whatever he said. This woman had talked about the whole, all all this shit, and y'all still paying her. Still paying her. Still paying. Her. But now now baby. now now the now, now now what you're talking about is important because I'm tired of all these shoe booty Negroes. All of a sudden, now they've been activated, and now they got a they got an opinion on what fucking the baby said. See, this was the crazy part, is Tank, and I tell everybody, Quest Love, yes, you were a magician. Ah, uh, yes. shoe booty Negro. Yeah, let, let, yes, yes, your wide ass hips got you positioned in life, cool. But what you gonna do one day? We say this all the time. What you gonna do one day, Quest Love? We roll to the same place the baby at. And he get caned or somebody knock your motherfucking knock teeth your out. Knock your motherfucking teeth out. What you <laughs> All these guys fight motherfuckers you preaching for, I guarantee they're going to watch you get your motherfucking dentures knocked out. Exactly. Or get your big ass switched around. You're going to exactly. be as humble and quiet. See, that's the thing. Stop talking shit. Stop talking shit. Back to you. What you going to do, boy? Exactly. <laughs> you, you, done let, you done let Elton John and Madonna gas your black ass into jumping out there in, in front of traffic. See, see this, let me tell you something. This is the number one rule, right? Let me prime example, right? All right, let me say this to you, right? I knew a nigga. Okay, I'll take shit. My homie, Scarface. And Scarface was a booty bandit. And I told his boy, I said, look, boy, <laughs> you, you playing with him. He not going to know you playing with him. So when he come to take them cheeks, it's going to be about force or, about, or, or, or finesse you out of them. And, he, and another dude tried to say something. I said, bro, look, if you got something to say to that man, say it to him. Because yeah. if his dick ain't going to you, why are you worried about it? <laughs> and, and I say that to say this. If it don't got nothing to do with you, then why are you speaking on it? Why are you worried about it? Yeah. See, but all you're going to do is put yourself in a situation where you're going to switch places. Yep. Because the, the, the world's opened up and niggas be forgetting, dog. One thing we know about this business, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow. It's everybody coming. gonna see everybody. It's coming. Everybody gonna see everybody and you're gonna have to prove all that shit. So if, if, if the baby got some young niggas, they're gonna shoot you over a parking spot. What the fuck you think they're gonna do if they see this fat, jelly ass, hip ass nigga? Size 62 inch waist nigga somewhere. Nigga gonna split your ass over like a, pe- like a pack of Wonder Bread. Mind 
your mother fucking business. Period. Point blank, man. Mind your yeah. business. The baby said what he said. That's on him. Yeah. I, that's on him. I ain't got nothing to do with it. But I'll be damned just because Madonna and Elton John say something. All of a sudden, I'm going to jump my ass out the window to be super agent. Agent agenda. They don't even got nothing to do with you. Ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah, man, years ago, niggas weren't fucking with black thoughts from Quest, from Trump, uh, from niggas who weren't fucking with him. Mm-hmm. Now, what, let me tell you, that paper, that currency, that's the most powerful thing that white men ever made. No, no, see, no, it ain't the paper. It, 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 it ain't the paper. That pat on the head. That motherfucking pat on the head, that little pat on the head, these niggas will rob, steal, and kill for. Just a little bit of acceptance. Just give me a little love, and I'll do whatever. This is, this is the funny shit. Quest Love, you fat, jelly ass nigga. You weren't, nigga, you weren't this talkative before Breonna Taylor. Ooh. You weren't it's for Trayvon Martin. You, want, you ain't use your platform for George Floyd. Quest, Quest Love from Chicago. No, he's from Philly. Oh, he's from Philly. The, the roots from Philly. Oh. Uh. All the niggas being killed out there. Yeah. See, so my thing is this. Don't be a preacher for something you ain't got nothing to do when your own backyard ain't clean. How many young, how many young inspiring artists in Philadelphia you ain't help out? Mm. Nigga, when you when you got it, when you got an argument with Jill Scott, you stop trying to do her music. See, nigga, don't know about this, nigga. Your track record ain't clean mm, at all, at all. But you won't be saying, "Well, let me tell you, man, it's not till you see somebody and then hit us." Oh, my, my, my man, you know I ain't mean. No, nigga, how, this is how you said it. So this is how I'm saying. Facts. Facts. You want to jump out the window for you want to jump out the window for these motherfuckers you don't know nothing about. When when it's so much shit that you could be this is the crazy part. All you motherfuckers in this world could speak on shit that really means something, tank. Y'all don't speak on it. All this shit in the fucking world. Y'all go home. I don't know this nigga's name, right? The Spanish dude. He fight for Bellator. He saw Kyle Kyle Wheatley, right? Ooh. Oh, Woodley, he, that's how you post. See, let me tell you something. This goes for all you sucker ass niggas that try to backdoor niggas, girls, or suck, side pussy and talk that. Let me tell you something. When a nigga got to talk down to the bitch about the nigga she's fucking with, you a bitch ass nigga, man. Facts. And when, when, when he got fucked, the white boy, when he got caught up with a mix, it, he was humbled, all this shit. Facts. How many, how many times you and me both, we know niggas personally. They did some sucker shit like that. Yeah, How, of course. Let me tell you something. I know you. You know me. I ain't never hollered at somebody you communicate with. You ain't never did that to me. No. No. But see, that that's that, that's that sucker shit, dog. Yeah. That's that sucker shit, but that's cool now. In the mafia, they used to kill you with that. Back in the old days, the tribes, let me tell you something. You can read the Bible. The Philistines were stoning people to death for that. Adultery is no joke. Fucking with another man's wife, fucking with another man's woman, period, is no joke. Well, the thing could be his wife, could be a side bitch, anybody. If it don't got nothing to do with you, why are you involved? Mm-hmm. I ain't never told a girl, yo, you shouldn't talk to that guy right there. Yo, he's a thing. What? Mm. If you was me, you was me. I don't give a fuck about where your past is. I'm your future. Facts. Facts. Real man don't give a fuck about your past. No. Uh, and real men taking real men ain't trying to back you and me both know niggas try to talk to people. Nigga for what? Right. Your people come around me, I'm a tree like a queen. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. This see, this the G code. If you have a girl or a side girl, I'm not never talking to them. Other than how you doing, yo Jay? Make sure you're good at the show. You good? Boom. That's it. I'm not giving no health health tips. 
I'm not saying that Sally's Beauty Shop is six six blocks down. I'm not talking about no motherfucking facial products. I ain't talking about perfume, no body creams. Mm-hmm. These, see, the weak nigga always got a window. Always. So you, man, I just wish for a fact that you could take 1990 to 2003 and let the people be out here and just take all this modern day trash right now and just swoop it up. For the record, because notice, for the, hold on, for the record, you know I don't have no fucking side chicks. Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> There's only you and me on the phone, so I gotta just say, I gotta just say. That. <laughs> Go ahead, continue. For, for the record, I don't believe in side chicks. I don't even know what that is. Don't even, not even in the vocabulary. I don't even, yeah. <laughs> to do I'm, with. I'm just saying, based upon what I read. Right. I, I, I digress. <laughs> You're crazy. I digress. Yeah, that, so, <laughs> that shit just blow my mind. Like, God, this is where we live at? This is crazy, man. This is crazy. And see what what they want. They want the baby to apologize. See, see, right. see this is what they do. They gonna fuck your money up. Of course, of course. Now, now, what I hope, what I hope is he stand his ground. I hope he okay. stand his ground. Because they made Nick Cannon get on their knees and suck all types of dick to get his Whew. job. Out. My God, I ain't never, I ain't never seen somebody get broken in public like that. No. Nah. And I like the dog. I like dog. You know what I'm saying? You're good peoples, man. But I ain't never seen nobody. You know what I mean? For, for speaking the truth. For speaking the truth, man. Now, this is the funny part. This is the funny part. This is what you got to give Trump. The nigga ain't never apologized for nothing. Nope. For nothing. For nothing. I don't give a fuck what he said. He ain't never apologized for nothing. But they want a nigga to apologize. They want a Negro, excuse me, to apologize for everything. Everything. For everything. Tank, what I tell you for, man, and this is the reality, right? I say this all the time. I'm only saying this because it's happened with current events. I don't know Bill Cosby's situation. Like, I wasn't there. All I'm saying is this, right? If it Bill Cosby's case is 30 years ago or 35 years ago, right? Right. Or a little longer. If that's what we're really doing, there's a Me Too movement. All these states where these black women were victimized mm. verbally, physically, and emotionally, mm. if they can find the women that said that Bill Cosby, so, so go do that. Yeah. yeah. Like I always say, if the woman that lied on Emmett Till, if mm. she's still alive, put her ah. ass in jail. And that's the litmus test right there. If the woman who lied, or if the woman who lied on Emmett Till is still living comfortably, yeah, I don't want to hear about nothing else that happened thirty years ago. Uh. If she's still kicking comfortably, I don't want to hear about nothing. She's an accessory to murder. Yeah. See what people don't, what people don't pay attention to, and people don't report. The bitch was there when they took him. Yep. Like this, just just like the girl. They said the shit in fucking Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm. Yeah. You let me tell you something. You gotta be a quick dick, quick dick type of nigga to get on the first floor, fuck a bitch off the second floor. I I I'm confused. Completely. And she fully clothed. Completely. See, that's the shit. So my, what I always say, Tank, make the narrative fair around the board. You can't keep saying this, but do that. That's not cool. No, you got to make it make sense, man. You, you I know a girl, right? Right. She going through all this shit. And I told her. That's what I said. Why would you fuck with a man that don't do nothing for you, beat you, cheat on you? Now you now both y'all gonna lose your job and look at you. Hmm. You cast this. That's, that's, that's me. Elizabeth Taylor and Jennifer Lopez own this world. You can't keep chasing love. Because you, you ask, you say something. 
Anybody, go ask a woman. Matter of fact, somebody should ask their mom. Your mom will tell you the first time you're going to marry out of love. The second time you're going to marry out of security and support. If you don't marry, whoever she's in a relationship with is going to support her, give her security, and help her live. Mm-hmm. See, you, these people keep this as me. You don't have me. You can't be like Jennifer Lopez or Elizabeth Taylor. You're not rich and famous. So you can't you can't go dick to dick all willy nilly. Nah, them days is over. Nah, them days is over. Now, now, now I ain't. <clears throat> I'm not trying to promote nothing to nobody, but them days is over, man. Yeah, them days is over. You end up being 45 with an OnlyFans page, busting your bussy out in front of all your children. Yep, that's but the I'll alternative. You, even more snack. End up being 45, broke as fuck. Mm. Child support came and buy a bag of dog food or a fucking Snickers bar for man. what? For what? For then what? things the next man supposed to take care of your kids. Find you a man and settle down and unify. Get unified. That's the only thing that's gonna save you. Get unified. Yep. Get you a team and unify. Yep. Because without that, without that, in a couple years. Without that, it's over. It's over. It's over. Listen to me. Every woman in America should look at Sierra. See, Kevin Lyles told Sierra, you will never sell another fucking record. I have to put you with a relevant black guy. Uh, Frank Ocean was gay. They did, they, people wouldn't buy a Trey song. She mm. went to Future. Uh, Future saw the light like, yo, I'm making this bitch popular. Russell Wilson been fucking white girls his whole entire life. He from Richmond, Virginia. He got himself some black land of pussy. The bitch threw it on him. Now look at her. <laughs> now look at her. She worth millions. <laughs> and ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. And ain't going nowhere. He's fat dick to get a song or let Missy eat you out to get a track. Nigga, you didn't mind, what am I paying attention to you here? We was fucking 50 and for real. Wasn't nobody doing that for you? See, that's what be the funny. See, that's, that's, that's another thing, Tank. Stop trying to act like you're a prima donna when you know you're not. No, you ain't the same way that. a nigga might have started off as a bouncer or a doorman to work his way up. Nigga, you, were, you was a whore to work your way up. Then you got a music deal. Look at this. I tell everybody, y'all keep thinking, come on, listen. Look at where the race ends, not where it starts. Come on, these Simmons of a white motherfucker that stole all that money. She, she stole the money for Russell Simmons to give him. That's what she wanted to be with. But she knew she had to take multiple black dicks when she was living on the couch inside the Def Jam office to get what she wanted. Mm. She married a nigga to take dicks in his ass. Right. See, that, that's what I'm saying. Look, look where they're in at. Because they're going to start. If a real woman, they got a game plan. Oh, she's going to fuck the janitor, but she wants the CEO. As you get the CEO, she's going to go somewhere else. Unless you got riders, man. Unless you got somebody that's going to stand in your corner, ride with you, grow with you. And Tank, we both know that's the hardest thing in life, yeah. to find a mm-hmm. woman or women that going to be where they're supposed to be, do what they're supposed to do. Because let me tell you, right now, your kids can go downstairs and look at that refrigerator. They know whatever they want, you're going to put in there. Because they know you're going to ride for them. A woman supposed to be like that. She knows she better cook. She better clean. She better perform like Vanessa Del Rio. Because that <laughs> nigga that she with, he going to make sure she good. Yeah. Every day. That's teamwork. That's right. And women, you can't keep dating these niggas that are 46 years old. You can't be 46, renting a room, still have a car payment, no health insurance, not even a full time job because it's only because it's because his fucking Instagram page look good and he don't got nothing. Mm. Where they do that at? Where I they do don't that get at? it confused. I'm just saying this. If you are a grown woman, fuck him, a grown man. God made us not to be pretty, not to be handsome. You can look at cavemen, security provider, organizer. That's the definition of a man. Mm. A woman supposed to come to her man, I'm here for you, but I need you to hold me down. Yeah. 
She's not supposed to want for nothing. Want she's for supposed nothing. to be her want loyalty, her honor, her ethics is supposed to be all about him. And her and she reaps her rewards. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's law. Yeah. That's law. Your woman don't pay for shit. Nah. That's law. Neither do mine. That's law. That's law. But if you don't get that. Yeah. That's law. Period. I don't want to hear none of that rest of that shit. <clears throat> All that trick shit. I don't want to hear none of that. If you're a woman, you go out for a man, the bill come, and both y'all look at each other, you're supposed to spit your face and walk and leave. Facts. 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 The bills is the purpose. Yeah. The bills is the purpose. You're supposed to, you're supposed to yo, I'm with him. Ain't nothing about it. When you say his name, your soul supposed to smile because <clears throat> he got you. Yeah. Just like this. You're supposed to be able to go to the bar. Dwayne The Rock Johnson coming to the bar and tear his clothes off. Your girl supposed to game break pit bull looking at him and turn her head. Because her, her nigga in the bathroom going to make sure on Monday she just was on Friday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's law. You know, this is like I say, poor man. I just wish that everybody, every. Oh, this, I'm gonna change subject for a second. I always tell you this, dog. I known this man since he was in fucking high school. He did the realest shit. LeBron went to an Usher concert. A nigga he don't even know ran up on him. He he, he stuck his head out. Yo, get back and walked away. Yeah. People in this. First of all, the venue security should be fired. The job post control. Number two, you can't run up on somebody you do not know. Uh-huh. I tell you what you do, Tank. Go get locked up tonight. Get put get put in general population and run up on somebody. When you wake up the next day, you're like, what the fuck happened to me? <laughs> like, like this is how confused the world is. Why would you run up on fuck being a fan? Why would you run up a complete stranger you do not know and expect him to embrace you? Entitlement. Entitlement. Yeah. You ain't entitled to nobody's company and personal space. No. You ain't entitled to it. Come on. Now you now you lucky one of us wasn't working for LeBron. Come on. We just stomped your ears together. Thank you. And and took the charge happily. Happily. Because you done lost your fucking mind. This was so crazy, right? If you got people shooting outside of a, bas- a baseball game, you got people shooting a six-year-old girl, you got people shooting this world, you got people going to the movie theater and getting killed, how do you know a stranger's mind? You, no one in this country can say, oh, he didn't mean no harm. You don't know anything. Mm-hmm. Every day in this world, somebody's getting hurt or killed. You, know, you can't say what somebody's going to do and not do. Right. You don't know what their intent are. Yeah. What their intent is. They running up, what they can no- have anything. What normal person runs up to a complete stranger? Right. That's like that's like our brother Stack Jack. Yeah. That's like our brother Stack Jack. They tried to barbecue this man for running up in the stands. Yeah. Think about it. What anybody could be throwing a cup of acid. They could be throwing they could be throwing feces. They could be throwing piss. Think about it. He's supposed to just take that. Because he black and a basketball player? Man, please. This is the crazy part. You said it. The guy that hit Ron Artest with the cup, what was they, he was supposed to, why, why would he, first of all, it's, it's called throwing a projectile missile. That's a felony. Mm. Why was throwing something at you that you do not know supposed to accept that? Right. That's assault. So, That's assault. So this is funny thing, right? Years ago, right, it was the, uh, the Giants played somebody, and the fans were throwing ice uh, snowballs on the football field and hitting people. So why the fuck? So they got charged for that. Yeah. It, just, it, just don't, it don't make no sense, man. I, I just I, I, well, that's what I want to tell you, Tank. This world picks and chooses who they want the victims to be yeah. and, and who the aggressors are. 
Let me be out with my son. You run up on me. You could be, you could be a Jehovah Witness. You can be smacked the fuck up. That's not, <laughs> that's not how men talk. Hey, it's LeBron, I'm your biggest fan. That's talking. Right. Because this is what niggas do. They run up, try to get themselves a selfie. See, Will Smith had to learn the hard way. Years yeah. ago, he was a white That's guy. That's right. That's right. He was known for getting all these places to pass on, and he kissed Will Smith. And Will Smith smacked him. Mm-hmm. See? That's because niggas are too comfortable, man. Too comfortable. You Listen me. When you least expect it, expect it. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you what. When society can tell you how to protect yourself, prime example, Tucker Carlson. When man, it's why you why you ain't smack him, Tucker? You a warrior? <laughs> you, you have Delta Force, Lord Ingram, Lord Ingram, Lord Ingram is still Team Six, right? Sean Hand, you assassin. Yeah, he was a cold bitch in that little market. In, yeah, in Trader Joe's, whatever the fuck that was at. Uh, a a fishing market one. Now, what, 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 what would have been funny? If a nigga would have knocked your goddamn jock strap out, what would you have done then in front of your kids? Cold pussy. But see, but see, when the narrative gets switched around, oh my God, he was how was he aggressive? See, sometimes when they say that shit, I want to show them aggression. Mm-hmm. Like, nigga, you need to feel like Ross felt motherfucking Sunday at motherfucking rolling loud. Whew. Where the back of your drawers are full of moisture because you secreted because you're fearful. Look, that white man will never, ever forget that. forget that day. That shit will go down in history as the day a black man put him in his place. Mm-hmm. Like, not just verbally. He saw that as a man. See, this is the worst thing you do to a man. When you let a man know God gave you a dick, two balls, some chest hair, some testosterone, and you put around men and you know for a fact that you are not even on the same compatible space they are physically, mentally, emotionally, and you realize at any second they can look at you as an object, not even a human being, because your mouth puts you in that situation, and there's nothing you can do. There's no screaming for the CO. There's no screaming for nobody. The door's been shut. It's a wrap. And you put yourself in that situation. It's a wrap. You're going to do three things. You gonna take these goddamn punches, or niggas gonna ram dick up in you. And you got at nighttime, you got to sleep yourself. I told you, man. He, he he will always learn that. I will never question a man ever again. Right. When I know he's in the right. Yeah. Not only what that. Not say? only that. When you find yourself in a position where there's no one to tell. No one to tell and no one to help you. Yeah, who are you going to tell? Because you let that little blue vest you had on, them little khaki shorts, them sketcher shoes, you thought that you was John Dillinger. Yeah, because he did. Now, yeah. once you got back there, you realized that you was nothing but Mrs. Doubtfire. Facts. Facts. And I'm going to say this again, man. The last time somebody was able to tell on us, 20, was it 2013? Yep. It's the last time you're going to be able to tell somebody on us. I remember years ago, I think it was 1998, right? This nigga, this guy, uh, big, big gat and a uh, little D mopped this nigga up, right? Then the nigga went to the police and said, I did it. Boom, boom, boom. I got the police report, said the horseman, Jay, whatever. Went to this club called Dinosaur, right? It was me, twin. It was me, twin, someone else with us, right? I think Bricks is with us. Me, Omar, Twitty, Chang, Antonio, Dogface, Little Mike, the Cowboys working. They're all working up there. We came in there. Twin saw the dude. Twin said, my man. Who are you here with? The guy's here with my brother. Twin said, okay. Twin turned to the brother. You his brother? And beat the dog shot out of him. Then we got to the other dude. The next time you try to tell on us, Mm. Not you gonna get it. Not your brother. Your mother gonna get it. Yeah. Tell you something. When it's time for to- time for Gat and Lil D go to court, the shit was gone. Witness never showed up. Facts. See, Facts. see, I told you before. There's no more repercussions worth for telling. Nah. nah, it's a shame. 
It's a shame. When the, when the snitches are doing interviews, it's, it's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. Crazy, bro. When the snitches are doing interviews, it's a shame. <laughs> It, 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 you, you and me had, you and me had, um, you and me had the opportunity to talk to the guy that was put on blast by that whole entire Takashi Six Nine and Meek Mill situation, and he said it. I was on mouth. Takashi yep. Six Nine knew exactly what he was doing, yep. and what fuck. And the reason why Meek Mills do nothing because at that time, yes, Meek Mills did did hire law enforcement, and at that time, the person he hired had his sidearm and credentials out. So Meek Mills couldn't use that Philly gangster shit when you actually had a officer with you or agent with you. Nice. So Takashi really just made him look crazy because he exposed the truth. Yep. I say that to say this. You guys in the rap world, I know this illusion that a police officer is there for you. First of all, no cops going to fuck his badge up. No, no I, cops, no cops going to fuck his pension up. No, fuck, I'm sorry, fuck his pension up. That's not going to happen. Never. No. So you have, you have to know what you're getting. Right. Uh, and, and let's just be real. I, I I got nothing but love for cops. We work with cops all the time. Yeah. I understand something. You hiring an active duty law enforcement officer is like hiring a top witness. Listen, I worked, let me tell you something. I had the pleasure. So did you. TJ was as hard as his motherfucking they come. He was a oh, cop. Oh, Cole G. Big Jenkins was a, a great cop that was hard. Goins was a good cop that was hard. Cole Malachi G. was a good cop that was hard. Little Petty go hard. Little Smitty was a cop. He went hard. Old man Sutton went hard. Peyton went hard. Like these are real cops that we used to work at the clubs with some bodyguard with that were really with the shits. Right. Now you and me also had an, another note we had an officer working with the guy, Rick. Rick was a cop. And Rick was this fucking fake, fraudulent, backstabbing, liar, coward, <laughs> bitch-ass niggas they come. Because when we want them back motherfucking stairs, your fucking steroid-taking ass ran, nigga. <laughs> Goddamn thing. But all, it's cool. All facts. I'm, I'm saying, so, so, therefore, we both know we've worked with... Saeed, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. Saeed, Saeed was rest in peace. I, I apologize. Even 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 Captain Sean Dozier from the hip hop police that was a good was a good cop. You know what I'm saying? He showed us love. But Rick showed us also what a real cop gonna do. He I I I ain't shit this nigga. I ain't fucking my shit up. Then go home then nigga. We in the trenches. What you, you here nigga, for? Because we damn sure didn't know this thing was coming in with fifty niggas to beat the fuck out of Drake. <laughs> That's Whatever they do. don't say, when a narrative always fit them, they gonna do what they do. As soon as it changed to how it's really supposed to be, they not gonna do nothing. No. No. The nigga dove over Chubbs and Drake's lap to get the back of the car. You know that. He watched the car <laughs> drive away. Left us on the stairs. Left us on the stairs. Left us on the stairs. Nah, y'all clean it up. See, that's what it's told you, man. And see, the dude, the little white dude that works with Kashi, he was the first one you notice. When you got an old white guy to do security for a black rapper, he reliving himself. Mm. Now he's cool. Right. Because, hey, bro, I'm not saying you got to be Ronnie Coleman. I'm not saying you got to be John Claude Van Damme. But if you really in the trenches and you active where you're down and sidearm and your feet and your fists and your mind or the weapons, you're going to be in some type of shape. Right. Without a doubt. Say, always say this to you, brother. There was a time in my life I was obsessed with dogs. I'm talking about all I wanted was game-bred dogs, combat dogs. I would go anywhere in America look for these dogs. I've never seen, I've been on plenty of yards I've never seen somebody show up with an English master. Did we lose him? Okay. Yo, y'all share and like and all that good shit. Y'all share, like, and all that good shit.
because we need to get shows like this out to the public. I mean, I mean, those of us in the industry, those of us who are really out here doing work, man, that's all I really give a fuck about. I don't really give a fuck about the the rest of the public, but this is knowledge here, man. Get these tools. Get these get these gems. Somebody yeah, show up in the, them type of dogs, St. Bernard, ain't Old English Mastiff, a Napoleon Mastiff, and be like, yo, these dogs can go. It's not the same. Yeah, they can bark, but they're not scratching, hitting. We're not, we're, so what I'm saying is, you get these people. Let's tell you something, man. If a person is too comfortable to control their waistline, how are they gonna have? How are they gonna take pride in protecting you? Mm. If they can't discipline their diet, yeah. If you have no self discipline, how are you gonna dis- have discipline? Me? Now we both now tank. We both know this. There's a lot of people in armed protection, law enforcement, military, fire department. Uh, what's it called EMS, ENTs, mm-hmm. that don't take care of themselves. But you're going to have more of a longevity run if you take care. By no means am I saying you got to be juiced out of the gills. I'm just saying your job's going to require standing. So please don't have a blood clot. Please have proper circulation. Your job's are walking. Please have some type of cardio fitness to yourself. You might take a break and stand or sit in a chair. Please don't be a narcoleptic and fall asleep. Mm. So part. these are the key, because well, I say this to you, because clients have told me this. The client told me a tank. The last guys I had sat down and fell asleep. I was gone for an hour. They woke up. My boss told me, I don't use that guy no more because I, we went for a walk. We had to keep stopping. Or I was going to kill him. He was too big. Like, at some point in life, this one got to be secure. This was overall health as a grown man. Whether you're 23 or 53, your health is what you need in life. That's your source. That's your that's your resource. That's your number one so, resource. So you ain't like I say, poor man. You can get a Peloton bike. You can get a dog. You can do rollerblading. You can do fucking CrossFit. You can just go to a local fucking a, a schoolyard, do pull ups. You can go hiking. Please control your waistline. Control your health. Low, know your. Half the men in America don't know their blood type. Half the men in America don't get blood work. Half the men in America don't take any type of supplements to help their body out. If you ask somebody right now, hey, man, what does cinnamon do? Oh, man, that shit makes my oatmeal taste good. No, that too, but also cinnamon is great for the men's penis. It helps you with erectile dysfunction, <laughs> circulation, and it's great for your immune system. What does honey do? Oh, honey tastes sweet. No, honey is actually a natural antibiotic. Mm. And you can look at the fucking Indians. When they got cut or something, they put honey on their cut. Right. What if, what if, what if, what if beets do? What if carrots do? What's onion? Well, everybody knows if you stick onions and garlic, pull everything out your body. Yeah. Like it's like it's so it's, instead of what instead of worrying about who's what's it called? Who's sound scale the next record? Take care of yourself. It's not going for security, just overall men's health. Right. This coronavirus showed everybody in America. First, they said it was a fat man's disease, a Spanish man, a black man, a skinny man. Men, take care of yourself. Work in your respiratory. Everybody's, if you're, everybody should be, I'm not saying get a vaccine. I'm not, I'm not promoting yes or no. I'm saying you have to be healthy, man. If you drink six beers on Friday, how about just drink one? Mm-hmm. Make sure you drink two gallons of water a day. If you can't afford alkaline water, goddamn drink Publix. Drink Fairfax Tap. Put a cucumber in it. Put a lemon. Put a, a fucking, what's it called? A pineapple. Watch your sugars. Mm. Because your children are going to do what you do. If daddy's drinking six cups of lemonade, so is Junior. If daddy's having 12 sticker bars, so is Junior. If daddy's eating chocolate cake, oatmeal cookies every day, so is Junior. If daddy's having a number one uh, supersized McDonald's, so will Junior. Let your wife fall back. You can cook some food in the kitchen one day. Live you can take example. $75. Get yourself, if you can't afford 90-10, 80-20. A, pack of, uh, a pound of 80-20. We both know that boneless chicken breast, you can buy a whole chicken cut up. We both know they sell the bags of rice. Uncle Ben's goes from uh, is the lowest or a dollar ninety nine to one seventy nine, or you can buy the small packs, or get a rice cooker. 
we both know you can get a uh, you get eighteen eggs anywhere. This is a store you go to anywhere from fucking a dollar eighty to three twenty. We both know everybody don't drink milk like that. So you don't have to worry about milk. Everybody don't drink orange juice because of the sugar. You can eat your fruit: blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, cherries. You want to spice your life up, nigga? Get some green tea, put some honey in it, put some ice cubes on it, and drink that. See, these are gems, man. About, these learn, are gems. I hope y'all taking system. notes. Huh? I said, I hope they're taking notes. Yeah. Because there's no way of fuck that these grown-ass men should be, no grown men should be getting the gastric back, the, uh, the bypass surgery. Come on, bro. Mm. There's too many ways to stay healthy out here. Yeah. If you have a dog and you and your dog do not walk at least two miles every day, then you're, then, then, you know, why do you have a dog for Everybody has a girlfriend or a girl. Everybody has somebody in their life. You and your partner to be no baby. On Saturdays, we're gonna take the kids and walk around the track, walk the park. Everybody lives close to a store. You know what? At nighttime, I get off work. I'm gonna walk from my house to the store and back. Everybody has a neighborhood or cold sex they can walk through. You, if you can't afford the gym, cool. Mm. You could do 300 push-ups a day, jumping jacks. Everybody has an hour, two hours to go to work if you're not catching the bus. That's facts, man. It's far, it's if you can stay at nighttime texting and talking, nigga, put your phone, speakerphone, yo, man, I'm going to knock these pushers out while I talk to you. Facts. That's simple. No, that's a fact, man. There's this, this way too many out of shape bodyguards yeah. in the business. Uh, diabetics, I mean, it, it, it's too many, man. We got to stop that, man. We got to stop that. You know, the days of the out of shape bodyguard are over, man. Why would you know more about a Hellcat than you would know about your body? Why would you know more about a motherfucking Gucci belt than you know about your body? Mm. Why would you know more about a motherfucking uh, 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 OnlyFans page than your body? Why would you know more about the motherfucking starting lineup for the Kansas City Chiefs than your body? Don't make no sense. Don't make none. Don't make none. And we said it before on this podcast. Go get your blood work done. Go get yeah. your heart checked. Go get all that, man. Go and you can tell that. the people that don't have a life, a life source posture for their wife or their kids because they can't pass the physical. Because you got to do EKG. You're going to do a sonogram for your heart. They're going to check your blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're 40 years old and you're getting blood clots and you're getting kidney stones, my friend, you're about to die. Mm. I promise you that person you laying down with at nighttime, she don't want her titties in your titties. <laughs> I can promise you that. <laughs> titties in a dick only exist on transvestites. <laughs> hey, that's the answer, you know. <laughs> that's a fact. You know, yeah. You know? They make it be like that, Tank. So I sit back and laugh. They make it be like that. Nah, man, that's that's important shit. You come to my house, shit. right? On one counter, I have three blenders. I have three types of protein. A vegan. I sent to six before I go to bed. I mix it up with my cottage cheese and I ice away. I have oatmeal, cinnamon, and honey. And I have of vinegar. On the other counter, I have every vitamin I take. On every other counter tank, I have four different bottles of alkaline water and a gallon of alkaline water because when I come into the kitchen, I have to make sure I drink that. In my refrigerator, I have kale, spinach, celery sprouts, eggs, cherries, berries, kombucha, plain green, plain green tea, and beet juice and carrots. I eat one carrot every meal. You know? Yeah. I must be doing something right. Got to be. Got to be. Got to be. I told everybody, everybody saw Dallas McCarver. He was 22 years old, trained for Olympia. Big as a brick shit house, Dead. Yeah. Rich Panana. Dead. That's right. You can't take all this juice and not do nothing. Look at Shadow. You, you had, he had surgery. His heart still was the heart of a 400-pound man. <laughs> 
That's a fact. All that nipping and tucking and ripping and pulling up. Come on, man. That's a fact. Then you can't take these competitive type of fucking pharmaceuticals if you don't know. Anybody knows computer raw is for fucking swimmers. You can't wait 260 to take computer raw because, number one, it accelerates your heart rate, feeds your metabolism. It, it shuts down your liver. It's like T3. Mm. Why are you trying to take something to alter your natural thyroid when it can have a reverse effect on it? Just to walk around as you work at Best Buy. Oh, he's ripped as fuck. And is he the guy in the TV section? That's Johnny <laughs> Ass. Okay. Best Buy is not paying nobody over 20. You're not going on stage. No. And if you're 30 years old, I promise you, you're not going to become a professional bodybuilder. No. Them days are over. If Sean Roney is not having any type of fucking um, sponsorship, how was Carl Jenkins from Gold's Gym? On fucking uh, Eastern Serain, how was he going? How was he going? <laughs> I'm like, bro, what, like, what are you trying to do here, man? You're not living reality. I can promise you, Tony Jenkins from fucking LA boxing is not going to fight Canelo. It's not going to happen, Tony. You're, you're 39. It's not going to happen. It's over. It's over. Hey, this is, it's, I just wish that we had, like, I seen this movie, right? Can't think of the name of it. And whatever thoughts you had, it would like you'd be on the open and people see your thoughts. Like the, we live around some delusional motherfuckers, man. Every day. A guy told me, say, big man, you body gonna work? I could tell. I'm like, yeah. He said, yeah, I started my company today. I said, okay, that's good, man. Proud of you, man. I love to see black companies. The man pulled a blunt out of his pocket or smoking. I said, you know what, bro? Do me a favor. Shut uh, your company now and quit this job. Because <laughs> you're not what we need. Nah, you're not. You're not. You're not finna smoke your way into success. I'm gonna tell you what I saw, bro. And this is, you know, I'm. I'm not gonna barbecue this guy. It's something I'm gonna tell him. Uh, you and me pull the our, our, our the man with me about this. This guy, you and me both work with, right? Mm-hmm. I sat back. He was at. The, he matter of fact, you saw him too. We went to. We went to this entrance. The people bum rushed the entrance. He got pushed back. He told the guy, if you try to go up these stairs, you might beat me up, but I'm going to call the police and get you locked up. <laughs> when I saw that, I cannot wait to speak to our management company because I'm going to let them know, if this is what you have around here, don't have me around here. Fact. Fact. We say it all the time, man. I don't give a fuck about you being a bitch. That's your business. Yeah. Just don't stand up here with me. Exactly. That's it. You're not going to protect yourself. You're not going to let me know somebody going to hit me in the back of my head. Exactly. Don't stand next to me. And you know, you know that's my pet peeve of all pet yeah. peeves. Do not stand next to me. You have to stand over there. And what we always say, they take, listen, if you went to any type of gun class, any type of pastel class, especially people that are breaching doors, do not have your feet Hanging over my feet. Oh my if god! If in the club, and we all fucking watch, do not be close to me. Oh my, my god! Ain't caught me a feet. You go stand over there. Oh my god! Because we're not listen. We're not dating. We're protecting. We're so right now. We're observing everything in this crowd. We are playing visual chess. You we're seen for the it. move. You seen it? Because if you trip me up, I'm fucking you up as soon as we get yeah. out. Yeah. Period. They don't get it, brother. If you trip me up, I'm fucking you up as soon as we get back to where we go. I tell you, man, this is crazy, bro. I tell you something, man. We've done a lot of jobs together, bro. A lot of jobs. I, people always say this. There will never be another tank, another you. Charles told me out of his mouth. He said, look, man, this is the best boot camp I've been in. You and Tank are the only people that can go over there, and what you want done over there gonna come back over here. Mm-hmm. See, here, bro, practice. Lamont will always tell you that story. And CIAA, if you tell, so I tell somebody, if you say they got that over there and we want that, we're going to get it. Ain't nobody gonna stop us back. No, Period. no one. Period. There's no such thing as no. No. And that's it. Not when our. Not when it's our mission to get, but we got to get our families waiting for it. Ain't no such thing as no. Ain't no At all, brother. Thing. You know that. Ain't 
no such thing as no. You know, take on on, on this on end note for this, bro. We just watched this right. We warned you guys about the entertainers having fake looking law enforcement. You got the example. We mm-hmm. gave you six nines people going to prison. Yeah. We told you Playboy Cardi eight looks stupid. We told you Polo G had a guy with sirens in his thing. And look at matter of fact, tank be real. The guy our, our the rental place we got our truck from, the guy's like, yo, my truck has sirens and you want it? Uh, we don't even want to know where they were. Hell no. Don't even show us where the button is. Exactly. We don't even need it. Don't even worry about it. I just wish everybody to take this job, become successful, have longevity, take care of their wives, their children, their significant others, whatever their family is, increase their health. Please be the best fathers you can be because our race as black men in the United States of America, they do not want us to be fathers. They do not want us to have a household. If you and your baby's mom are beefing, please put it to rest. Let your child grow up in a non-toxic, happy environment. Mm-hmm. If you have a girlfriend or if you have another friend, make sure if they're in your life, hold them down. Nice. If you just have your wife or wives, hold them down. Let your daughter see. Let your son see. Let your dog, cat, parakeet, snake, bearded dragon see what a man does for five for his castle. Nice. Don't be paying your mortgage on the 20th when it's due on the 1st. <laughs> Don't get them kids' cell phones cut off. Don't have your cell phone never grown man's name when you're 48 years old. Oh, man. Earn something. Learn something. You and your wife sit together, put 2000 3000 Bitcoin. Get a brokerage account. Put something in your kid's name. Let your kids have something. You could take $150, you could take $20 a paycheck and keep putting the bank every month in a money bar account and give it to your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Let them grow into something. That's right. Give, them, give them a business. Them to us when we us need to take care of us. Yeah. Hand them a business. Stop teaching your kids to be employees. Teach them to be yeah. bosses. Give them make something sure they can make money off. Make sure you know how to read. Facts. Make sure you teach your kids the benefits of learning math because math is key. On Sundays, you ain't got nothing to do. You and your wife sit down and watch CNC. CNN, BC, learn about the stocks. When you want a tour taking a shit, learn something. Baby girl, we're going to invest this. That's we right. can put 500 in this and see what's going to happen. That's right. Own something. Own something. It's too many people in this world that got something, and we as strong black men can't keep wanting it. It's not handout because you're working. Let us have something. Mm-hmm. Let us be transparent. Let us learn how to work our money. Let's learn how to right. manage our money. That's right. Learn how to get these fucking, stop putting your, stop using your own account and get an LLC. Pay your state tax on your business. Get a corporate business credit card. Start a corporation. Come on. Come on. Come on. Everybody don't want to, everybody in this world don't want to get paid by fucking Venmo and Cash App. Hmm. Have your business account set up right. What you do is teach your girlfriend, your wife, your significant other how to do the invoices. How to know the tax laws, how to do the 1099, t- t- the, the fucking W9. Let her learn all that stuff. That's right. You shouldn't be talking to nobody. It's simple invoice. There it go. That's right. Every household is your business. Yeah. Every household is your business. Your, your first right. employees is your significant Tell, other. You've seen firsthand what that business card do airline tickets, hotels, rental cars. You get there, you ain't waiting for the room's already done. Put yourself a financial team, your own travel team. Learn how to do an invoice. Learn how to get reimbursement. Because the same companies you deal with that pays you for your boss, ain't, ain't no harm foul talking to them. Right. It's, by 2023, if you haven't uplifted yourself and made your family a better, I'm not saying you got to be a millionaire. I ain't saying you got to live in a $900,000 house. I'm just saying... Uh, may each year in life as a man, as a leader, progress yourself for your family, your children, then you're a failure. That's right. If you can't find a client that's going to give you a year contract at a rate you need, then go to something else. Hey, man, everybody can't bodyguard motherfucking, uh, what's my call? A- Angelie Jolie. It's not made for that. That's right. Yeah, we, we got to change the narrative, man. The new, yeah. the new picture. 
the new picture of success ain't dope boy no more. No. It ain't being a gangbanger no more. All them days is over. The new picture over. of black success is being a husband We've and a seen father. Post Malone with nine bodyguards that couldn't work at an old country buffet, but you know what? They all had jobs. <laughs> they all had jobs. They all had jobs. The new picture of success is being a husband and being a father. Yep. yep. That's all it is. That's that's what it is now. That's what it is now. Because, America, because very soon, because very soon, very soon, if you ain't a husband and a father, you dead. Yep. Yep. Let me tell you something. America's worst nightmare is a strong black family. Mm. You ain't got to you ain't got to be the hustlers. But God damn it, you could be the K's, the W's, the S's, the P's, the, the nigga, trust me. They scare that. Yeah. The same little Ricky C motherfucking Ma and Pa, they gonna be scared when yeah. they see him and her. That's right. That's our motto. We ain't the Huxtables. Yeah. But um, yeah. Trust me, you gonna feel good. Come home and turn on all your goddamn lights. You gonna feel good. <laughs> home. The front door's open, Mom. It's gonna feel good to go piss out in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Very soon it's gonna feel be. Good it's feel to good to come home. home. So why right. was trash picked up late? <laughs> Come Which, home to an empty know, refrigerator. I, I, love, I love these talks. You say, I hope our brothers out there listen to these talks, man. I hit you up tomorrow. Yes, sir, man. Get some rest, man. It's all good. Hell yeah. All right, brother. All right, bro. And, and there you have it, man. There you have it. All the gems, man. I hope you guys took notes, man. There's a few fellas, man. I know that. Uh, yo. This is it. This is it for us, man. This is where you get all that information. You ain't getting nowhere. You ain't going to get it on CNN. You're not going to get it on BET. See, this is this is all the shit we're going to say and we're going to talk about that nobody else is talking about, especially for us in our business, man. So um, those of you in the business, share to somebody in the business. Put them up on game. Have them listen. And um, we're going to expand in due time. Let it grow naturally. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not in and trying to, make money, trying to make money. We got money. You know what I'm saying? So um, we want to expand and grow and, you know, big up those who should be bigged up. So I hope you enjoyed the show. Like, share to people in the business or to whoever. Whoever. We don't really, we don't really give a fuck. You can share it to whoever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, if they like it, they love it. If they hate it, oh well. If we said something you don't like or something that hurt your feelings or something you feel a way about, you should do something to us when you see it. Other than that, shut the fuck up. And we'll close like we do every show with all due honor and praise to the Most High. I worship thee through the divine image of my wives. Amen and good night.